Shilonen will be out in the coming days, and she looks like she's going to be a great character. However, I am seeing her being hyped up as a big upgrade even for teams where that doesn't seem to be the case. So I'm going to take an in-depth look into a lot of different teams for Shilonen and comparing how she would perform there compared to other options. By the end of this video, we should have a better understanding of what teams you should and shouldn't be hyped to use Shilonen in. There's a lot to cover, so feel free to use the timestamps to skip to whatever you are most interested in. And keep in mind this is pre-release, so there may be some things about Shilonen discovered later that weren't mentioned in this video. Let's get started. Alright, so chances are you already know what Shilonen does by now, but just to make sure that we are all on the same page, I'll briefly summarize our kit. She's a Geo support unit capable of providing 36% resistance shred by casting her skill and doing two normal attacks. But if there aren't at least two crystallizable elements, which I'll be aggravating as spec, she will not get her rest shred. Silonin is a Night Cell Blessing state when she uses her skill, so she can also provide a 40% damage bonus to both the Geo and the elements she crystallized. Then her burst provides continuous, massive single target healing, but this also requires having two FEC units on your team. If you don't, her burst will just do more damage, but the damage isn't good to begin with. Now, with that covered, let's look into those teams. Starting with the teams I think are going to benefit by far the most from Shilonen are HP Scaling DPS, aka Nuvalet and Muolani. These two are slated to benefit tremendously from Shilonen, because there is no dedicated HP buffer like how attack scalers have been it, so they are mostly limited to just Farina and Kazuwa to get good buffing. In Nuvalet's case, his fourth slot is usually someone like Zhongli, Baizu, Charlotte, or even Kachina. So Xylonin is obviously providing way more buffing than any of those units could ever dream of. With Xylonin as the fourth compared to other options, the DPS goes up by more than 10%, which is pretty insane considering how high it already was. You can also use Xilonin in Vaporize Nuvalet, and this is fantastic because Xilonin is Geo, so she will create a Crystallized Shard, allowing you to use Archaic Petra on Jungling and pick up the Crystal, providing another large buff. This is not only more damage than using Instructors on Jongling, but having 5 star artifacts instead of 4 star makes hitting her energy requirements as solo pyro way easier. And assuming Nuvalet is C0, this is actually higher DPS than using Farina instead of Jongling, but since using Vaporize you're already at 3 stacks, Farina is going to be way better as soon as you get Nuvalet to C1. And you may want to consider picking up Nuvalet C1 if you plan to play him with Shilonin, since you won't have any form of interruption resistance with her. And for Mualani, her team structure involves using a second Hydro for Resonance setup and whatever buffs they can bring, and then a Pyro unit for Vaporize, and then the fourth slot is someone else for more buffing or utility. Most people use Kazuha, but his buff uptime is actually really bad for Mualani, since he can't refresh the damage bonus from our field, as Pyro will be the aura. And Mualani's skill ends if she swaps, so you can't refresh that way either. So if we compare this to a team like Mualani, Mona, Xinyan, or Zhongling, and Kazuha versus Mualani, Mona, Zhongling, Zilonin, it's 81k DPS versus 92k. That's like a 15% increase, which is very scary to think about since Moolani's damage is already outrageously high. Note that those numbers are assuming that Mona is at Constellation 1, and Candice will be better than a C0 Mona, and that's more like 86k DPS. So if you're a Nuvalet or Moolani main, you should definitely be hyped to pull Shilon in if you have the Primo Gem savings for it. She's going to be huge for both of them. The one caveat I will say is, since Nuvalet and Moolani have both extremely powerful constellations, if you are specifically just looking for vertical investment to improve their team, you might get bigger increases by just pulling their constellations and our weapons, but we've no clue when they will rerun, so skipping Shilon in for that is probably not the wisest idea. Next, there was a lot of hype for Shilon in being a game-changing support for Geo teams that a lot of people have been wishing for. I've seen many people claim her to be this huge upgrade for both Navia and Ito, but looking into it, I can't agree with that at all. Starting with Navia, her current best team is Navia, Bennett, Farina, or Zhongling, and Chiori. If you've been operating under the assumption that Kachina is better than Chiori here, 
That's not actually true. Kachina is a competent option that you can get similar enough results with very minimal investment into her, so she appeals to way more players, but she isn't actually better. So I'm comparing to Chiori, not Kachina. Zilonen is obviously better than Kachina, there's no point in comparing that. And then looking at the math, we can see I have Shilonen and Chiori basically equal 79k versus 78k. You might be wondering how that's possible when Shilonen provides so much buffing to Navia and Farina while Chiori only gets one doll. There are several factors at play here that I'm going to explain. Don't hyper focus on only one of those points on its own, as the reason it's so close is because of the combination of all of these factors added together. Firstly, Chiori takes less field time than Jilonen, so the rotation time is shorter. You may think you need to do a 20 second rotation with Farina on the team, but on your first rotation, Farina can just do EQ and then second rotation QE. Then in the third rotation, you can just cast her brushed, then swap to her again mid rotation to recast her skill, but you probably don't even need to cast all of your abilities in the third rotation anyway, if there's even a third rotation to begin with. So the Chiori team can execute closer to an 18 second rotation, while the Shidonin is closer to 21 seconds. Then, while Chiori's sub DPS damage is a lot lower without two dolls, it's still good damage. Furthermore, Chiori has off field geo application and Shidonin doesn't, so Navia will have a bit more stacks on her skill. As long as Navia is getting at least three stacks, getting less isn't that big of a deal. But again, it's the combination of this alongside the other factors that result in them being so close in DPS. One thing you will notice with the calcs though is the damage per rotation is about 14% higher with Shilonin than Shiori, so depending on how well invested your units are, you may be able to run rotate Barsis that you wouldn't with Chiori. If this is the case, then Shilonin will clear, clear faster compared to Chiori than the calcs would suggest, but this is only if you are able to run rotate with Shilonin and not with Chiori. Now, it's important to note that Chiori has great vertical investment. She actually has the highest overall damage increases up from her constellations in the entire game. But Shilonin also has a very strong C2 and weapon, so it's also important to see how they compare to each other when vertically invested, especially since some players already have Chiori, while no one has Shilonin yet. If you have Shilonin on her signature weapon compared to C1 Chiori, then as you can see, the DPS is now higher with Chiori, although they are still within 5% of each other, so to me, that's still equal. But if instead of R1 Shilonin, you got her to C2 instead, compared to either getting Chiori to C1, R1, or C2, at this point, they're basically equal again. And if we take one step farther, and compare both at C2 R1, Chiori starts to, starts to gap Shilonin. Getting Shilonin to R1 it didn't actually make a big difference there because you already have a ton of damage bonus from Scroll and Shilonin C2 plus Farina. And since Shilonin is no longer on Favonius, Farina requires a lot more energy recharge, so I had to switch her from Festering to Favonius. Meanwhile, Chiori is still getting massive damage increases with every piece of investment you give her and she can still be scaled way farther beyond from here, as her C3 and C4 are still large increases, then her C6 turns her into the main DPS of the team, whereas Jilonin's constellations beyond here have little to no impact. Now I know that was a lot of information and numbers, but to summarize, if you don't already have Chiori and don't plan to do much vertical investment, then Jilonin overall is probably a better pick for your Navia. But if you already have Chiori at all, even at C0 or R0, then pulling Zhilin in specifically to use her with Navia wouldn't make much sense as you'd get a way stronger team by pulling a Chiori constellation or weapon, especially if your Chiori already had a constellation or her weapon. So the claims that are going around about Zhilin in completely replacing Chiori and rendering her useless are not correct, so don't let those mislead you into making an incorrect decision. Alright, now we can talk about Ito. The problem with Shilonen here is, Ito really wants to be played with at least 3 Geo units, as he has really bad energy otherwise. Shilonen does make 4 Geo particles, but she's not capable of funneling those to Ito. Even if you build a lot of ER on Ito, 
Like this, there are still a lot of factors that can cause him to still not have his bar stub yet, and have to cast Ushi outside of his bar to catch particles. This not only loses a lot of damage on Ushi, but also results in having a longer rotation and lower buff uptime. When this happens, the team will really just kind of fall apart at the seams. You don't have this problem in Mono Geo teams because there's 3 to 4 Geo units with him catching particles from some of them, and also like two Favonius weapons on the team since Zhongli and Garo have nothing better to use. This problem can be alleviated if you have a C2 Ito, but how many people have a C2 Ito? Then another huge problem is, there just isn't a good combination of two Fek units you can use together with Ito. He can do Farina Yelan, but because he doesn't spend much n time in normal attacking, Yelan gets very few burst procs. He could also do Farina Bennett, and this works, but as you can see from the numbers, neither of those are actually better than his Mono Geo team, while having way more practical issues. So in my opinion, the only real reason to consider Zilon and with Ito would be if your Farina is C2 and your Chiori is not vertically invested. But even in this case, you probably do better to just play a team like Ito, Farina, Chiari, Garo. Zilonin could become better for Ito in the future though, if we get a better effect duo that he can use. Maybe Mavruika will grant him that. But even then, just note that the practical issues will still be there. Then for another Geo unit, there's Noel. Unfortunately, as we know, Zilonin does not work in triple Geo at C0, so you won't be able to use her with Noel until your Zilonin is C2. You might be wondering what about using Noel and Double Hydro, but the problem is, Noel and Double Hydro on Favonius deals extremely low damage herself, and Shilonin is already healing, so there's basically no point in Noel even being on the team at that point. If you do get C2 Shilonin, then Noel's best team will be Noel, Farina, Shilonin, and Chiari. But with C0 Shilonin, Noel will be better off sticking to our current best team, which is Noel, Farina, Chiari, Kachina. Alright, now what about Pyro DPS? With Hu Tao, Zilonin can shred resistance for both Hydro and Pyro, while providing a ton of healing for Fanfare, so she can make a lot of sense here. However, she can't buff Pyro with the Squirrel set here, only Hydro, so a C0 or a 0 Zilonin isn't quite as strong as Bennett for Hu Tao. It is pretty close. If you get Zilonin's weapon, then she will be better, but on that note, Bennett can also use Freedom Sworn, and Bennett with Freedom Sworn is still better than Zilonin on her weapon. But once Zilonin is C2, she is definitely the best fourth slot for Hu Tao's team. She's definitely still great before that, just more like a side grade to Bennett and not an upgrade. For all at Chino, you can get a reliable Pyro Scroll every rotation, you just won't get Hydro, but not getting Hydro doesn't really matter, as you don't care that much for anyone's damage in an all at Chino team other than her own. Because of the much bigger buff uptime that Chilonin has compared to Kazuha, this is a pretty, pretty big increase over Kazuha for single target. The catch is that in AoE, Kazuha's grouping tremendously improves her performance. Dolichino's single target is still great even with Kazuha, so if the Abyss is a mix of AoE and single target, Kazuha will probably be better, but for content that doesn't really need grouping at all, Shilonin is definitely an upgrade. It's a similar situation with Linny and his Reverse Vaporize team, which is his strongest team. Shilonin will be a bit of an upgrade over Kazuha and single target, but for Kazuha's Hydro Absorbed Burst makes Vaporizing all of Linny's damage much more reliable. Delaney also greatly needs Kazuha's grouping and AoE content, as with grouped enemies, he can do huge AoE nukes with his burst and skill. You can also use Zilonin in Mono Pyro Linny, but it's basically the same DPS as using Kazuha, so it's not worth losing his grouping for. And Delaney Mono Pyro is a team where you can freely swap to Kazuha, so buff uptime isn't an issue there. And if you were to play a Mono Pyro Linny team without grouping, Double Geo with a Zhongli Chiari is also equivalent DPS while having a shield. Then the Luke in gaming, they don't gain anything out of Shilonin, as there is no room for her in their teams. You can't replace Farina or Zhang Yun, and Bennett's buffing plus C6 infusion is just way too much to give up as well. Moving on to Cryo teams, I don't think Shilonin is good here at all. With Risley, while Shilonin will shred both Pyro and Cryo, you won't scroll buff both. 
that after your first rotation, it's pretty much impossible to crystallize Cryo unless you use Risley's Burst, but he requires a ton of energy recharge if you want to burst every rotation. Pyro is still applied if you don't use Risley's Burst, so you have no way to clear it. With Pyro Scroll buff and not Cryo, Shilonin is much weaker than using Fre Freena here, and even if you could burst every rotation on Risley to get Scroll every rotation, it's still way inferior to Farina. And for Ganyu, there's really just no room for Shilonin. Kazuha can act as the Pyro applier for Ganyu while also providing his grouping, which Ganyu benefits from tremendously. And since he can apply the necessary Pyro, that allows Ganyu to fit in Shenna for a lot more buffing. With Shilonin, you do still need someone else to apply Pyro, which will be Zhongling. And just like with Risley, you're not reliably getting Cryo Scroll every rotation with Zhongling there. Dayaka just flat out cannot fit Shilonin into her team at all. She needs Hydro for Freeze, she absolutely needs Kazuha for grouping, and then she needs a second Cryo, otherwise good luck ever casting her burst. Even if you were in a scenario where you don't need grouping at all, Ayaka can freely swap to Kazuha to refresh his buffs, so Shilonin's buff uptime wouldn't give her any advantage over Kazuha at all with Ayaka. And now the last element to go over is Electro. One team I know that a lot of people are excited to use Shilonin in is Double Hydro. I have seen claims that this is now better than Raiden's Cheverus teams, but this doesn't quite seem to be true. The problem is, you can't proc Electro and Hydro Crystallize at the same time on an Electro-charged enemy. Crystallize will proc Electro and not Hydro, so only Raiden should be getting the scroll buff here. You will of course still shred both elements, so it is an upgrade for current Raiden Double Hydro teams, but it's still not stronger than Cheverus Overload teams. That's also before getting Mavrika, whom if she is an off-fielder at all, is basically guaranteed to be an upgrade for Electro Overload teams. However, if you do already have vertical investment into both your Farina and Yelan, then you may see better results with Riding Double Hydro than current Cheverus Overload, as the damage will be higher. So if that's the position that your account is in, then Zilonin will likely be good for you. I do fully expect Mavrika to be a big enough upgrade to Chef Overload for that to no longer be the case when she's out, but that's to be seen in the future. Then for other Electro DPS, I can't really think of anywhere that you'd use Shilon in. She'd be an upgrade for Aggravate Sino since he gets abysmal uptime out of Kazuha, but that won't change the core problems of that team. Nahida sucks in Multiwave, the team's damage is just way lower than Quick Bloom. And then with other aggravate teams like Kaching, Yai, and Clorant, there's not really a point in using Shilonin over Kazuha. In aggravate teams, Kazuha actually does a good AoE sub DPS damage since he gets aggravate swirls, compared to Xylonin doing similar buffing but no sub DPS damage at all. But of course, Kazuha's grouping is also way too good in these teams, and Yai and Kaching can both swap to Kazuha at any time without losing anything. Alright, now that covers just about all the teams I found worth talking about for Shilonin. To recap, for Hydro, she's a big upgrade for Nivlet and Moalani, but won't work with Child at all. For Geo, she's a side grade slash slight upgrade to Chiari for Navia, but gets beat by Chiari depending on the level of investment. She gives Ito another team option outside of Mono Geo, but due to the team restrictions and practical issues, it's not actually better. And she doesn't work with Noelle until C2, but she is part of Noelle's best team once she is C2. For Pyro, she's a side grade dependent at C2 for Hu Tao, but becomes the best option by a good margin once she's C2. Single target upgrade for Lenny and Olachino vaporized teams, but in AoE, they will still want Kazuha. For Electro, she is an upgrade for Rod and Double Hydro teams, but doesn't make them better than Cheverus teams unless you're vertically invested into Yelan and Farina. And for Cryo, Shilonin currently doesn't do anything for those teams at all. So Shilonin isn't actually an overall upgrade to that many teams, however there are quite a few that she is still a great option nonetheless. Every new support unit doesn't have to be the best in slot or big upgrades to existing teams to be a great unit. She's a powerful and versatile support that can unlock a lot of variety into your account's team building, and due to how universal her buffs are, She's bound to work great with other new teams in the future as well. Plus, the teams that she is an upgrade are some of the best teams in the entire game. Thus, Shilonin is definitely a fantastic S tier support, but I definitely think she is being 
hyped up a bit too much. And there is a bit of misinformation into thinking she's an upgrade in places that she isn't. But hopefully this video gave you a much clearer understanding of where Shilonen is and isn't going to be worth using for you. If you liked today's video, please be sure to give a like and subscribe and comment down below.